Welcome to Sister Wives, uh, Season 18, Episode 8, The Writing is on the Wall. Because Cody spray painted it there. I am... In big bold letters on Mary's garage door I'm... saying, leave, I hate you. <laughs> that would have been kinder than what he actually did. It actually would have been. And more interesting also. So, I was so stoked for this episode. I was telling all of my TikTok followers, this is going to be a great episode. I had all these high hopes. It was not what I had thought it would be. It, it looks a like... a big old fat turd <laughs> on your car windshield. I thought there would be more discussion and interaction between uh, Cody and Janelle, and there wasn't. There was, it was a very, very small part of the episode, and we saw almost the entire date in the preview. I thought there would be of more... Of what they recorded. I would be, I, I, um, I was excited to hear from the kids how they were feeling, and we didn't get any of that. We got a little of that. Well, I'd love to see them. I'd love to see them. That was enjoyable, but it looks like next week we're getting a lot of this discussion. I thought there'd be more discussion from Christine. It was very, it was good, but we also saw it all in the preview. And then we saw a lot of Cody and Mary, and it was essentially Cody not wanting to say anything too encouraging and not wanting to say anything too unencouraging. He didn't want to encourage Mary, but he didn't want to discourage Robin. So he basically said nothing. And then he immediately cut over to the interviews where he's like, I'm a big, strong man. And I can say all of my feelings when there's not actually people in the room with me. Oh, no. So that was really disappointing. Reminder, last night, 90 Day Fiance Season 10 started. We're going to recap that. I look for our recap tomorrow. Uh, please consider joining us. Um, bring a friend. Or bring an five, enemy. A thousand. Uh, we will be doing that. We put little title cards at the bottom so you can remember who's who. Very excited. We'd love to get more of our sister wife audience over there. Uh, reminder that we also We'd started. We'd love to get an audience over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love the ten people that hang out. You are our favorites. Mwah, 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 mwah. Uh, we also have a Patreon, so if you want to watch us watch the episode and hear our commentary. It's available on our Patreon on our $10 and $25 level. I had someone sign up at the $5 level and was really unhappy, but it says in the description. But of course, I'm happy to refund that person because I don't want anyone to be mad at me. Um, I, I don't care. I know John does not care. Speaking of I don't care, we started a uh, um, merch shop. It should be in the video below. We only have two designs. We have Teflon Queen and we have Settle Down Johnny Appleseed. We're going to have more. You can always tell us in the comments. I'm just struggling to find time to even do things like look at the comments on the videos. Uh, and so I am really, really, really far behind on everything. I get really pretty severe winter blues, and they are starting to kick my butt. It's like this instinctive desire. Do you also of, have like a whole other job? I have a couple other jobs as well. Like writing books? I write books, which you are happy to get at any of your favorite vendors. They're available as ebooks, paperbacks, and some, of, some them of them as audiobooks. Some of them. Request, you know, you don't want to pay for them? Great. Request through your library system um, to carry them, all that kind of stuff. But I get really bad winter blues, and uh, it kicks my butt every fall. I'm like, right now, all I want to do is eat and do cozy little crafts like crochet and quilt, which is not any of my existing jobs. And um, complain about life. And complain about, yeah, that's a pretty big part of it. Um, watch TV, stuff like that. So, anyway, let's get to the episode. So, Cody and Robin arrive separately. Does he wear gloves this episode? I didn't see him wearing gloves. No gloves. But they arrive separately, which to me feels like such a, like, oh, we're not always together. And it's like, dude, you're down to one wife. Just show up with her. He, uh, he, she shows up in his Nissan Titan. Titan, which I do not believe. A lot of people are saying that's the truck that he that uh, he bought for Janelle. I don't believe it is. I tried to look for the clip this morning to verify, but I believe that the truck he got for Janelle was a much bigger truck. Um, I don't know. It's the one that Janelle said, oh, his wimpy little truck, which is a full-size truck. Yeah. An eight-cylinder engine. Well, she made a joke about how uh, he, he couldn't pull the RV with his wimpy little truck. But, I mean, it's a big RV. But a lot of people thought that it was the one that he bought that he wouldn't allow Janelle to drive uh, because he didn't want a soccer mom and then Robin's driving it. But I don't believe that Robin's driving it. Although I'm happy to be wrong and to make fun of her and how awful she is. And then he's driving a, you a say, new convertible. convertible. Not the Nissan and not the first Lexus, though I'm not convinced it's not a Lexus. I just can't tell. 
So they arrive separately. They make a big deal about arriving separately. And I'm like, just arrive together. And then he's like, oh, my hair is really wild. I better get my glasses to hold them back. And I'm like, oh. Then as they're at the front door, I see all these packages. My first thought is Mary's buying a lot of stuff. And then I'm like, she's not buying stuff. She's selling stuff. And it's like two or three big, huge containers of, of I assume, LuLaRoe clothing that she's sending out. And um, I'm like, you know, I understand why they don't. And I'm glad they don't promote a lot of their MLMs because it, those are really dodgy practices. But I'll say, I really wish they would rub into the fact that Cody... She makes money. That she makes money. Cody and Robin are big fat failures. Yeah, they don't do anything. And then, um, and then uh, uh, as far as I know, by this point, Christine and Janelle were also doing their Plexus thing, which is also an MLM, which I'm not crazy about. But... They are working, regardless of how you feel with the job they're working at, they are working as opposed to Cody. So they have all these packages, and I put, like, Rocket. Well, I mean, Robin works. Her, her With her best customer, right? Yeah, as the pencil box. So she has, uh, so Mary is saying, I know Cody won't care. I'd like it to be a slapper realization, but it's not going to be. And I go, oh, gosh, it, we know it's not going to be. So then Cody... This whole segment is the weirdest dude the whole time. I'm going to sit at this chair with your stuff in front of it. Is that okay? I just don't want to sit in the middle. I know. You're just like, shut up, dude. We just... don't care. And then he goes in this long diatribe about PDAs and how Robin is always so sensitive to what other people see. And we're like, yeah, we know that. We know. Do you mean does she act for the camera? Is she constantly saying and doing things to look better on camera despite uh, her what she's actually going to do? Yeah, we noticed. We noticed that she's always saying the right thing. She's always been like that. That um, she thinks is the right thing. That It's the dumb thing or the well, fake cry, but it's always what she thinks is going to look really good. She thinks it's going to look really good, but it's not. It's The actions don't match the words, so it ends up just being hollow. Like, oh, I always support Mary. Do you call her? No? Okay, then you don't always support Mary. Like, there was just this whole segment, and he kept it. To me, this is what I think happened. What I think happened was Mary went right back to him, said, um, sorry. Robin. Robin went, I'm having a really tough time today keeping names straight. Um, uh, so that knob goblin. Okay, so Robin rushes back to Cody and goes, Mary's going to leave. You have to encourage her to stay. And he's like, well, I don't know about that. And they had some sort of power struggle about that. And so Cody is trying to walk this fine line between acting like this is the first time he's heard it, trying to get her to leave without actually telling her to leave because he doesn't want, he wants to make sure he makes enough of an effort so that Robin feels that he's being supportive. Because in his words, if he abandons any of this women, these women, Robin will lose respect for him that which is, robin made him abandon which is and never see wild to me because does he not understand how a camera works i mean how is robin going to feel when she and not that i care how robin's going to feel but how is robin going to feel when she watches and well, she hears him say episode, that she's just so selfless i got you know so i i, I just think wait they they are really masterminds in their own mind they really think they're being brilliant here because so the whole way this goes is he goes this long thing about PDAs, about how they can have PDAs and other family with PDAs. And they, all, they also used to talk about equal time between the wives, and then that never happened. So then they have Mary, and Mary's kind of like, I didn't have problems with PDAs when we were in a good place, but you know we haven't been in a good place in a decade, so I don't know what the big deal is. But he, he really has to, like, he keeps bringing up things so he can be a martyr, and it's pretty blank and ridiculous. So there's, they start talking, and she and oh, then he goes this whole big thing about how Robin and I don't have a safe place to show our love. And I'm like, you guys have been exclusive for two years. Now, somebody said in my comments, maybe they mean on camera. Well, so I started thinking... Start your own OnlyFans. How often are you on camera? So in the first eight episodes, we have gone roughly six months. And... They have been, it was a, a, quite a bit of time around Thanksgiving and Christmas that they filmed. But it's not, not every day, all day. And then at Valentine's Day. And now we're in May. So they're filming maybe three hours a month. And the rest of the time, Cody is exclusively with one wife. So this idea that, like, they are so martyred because they can't be authentic with each other. Even though they are alone together 
all the time. They're being paid to work. I would love a job. I would in a heartbeat on a, be on a reality show where they film three hours a month. And then I consider, oh, you don't understand how hard it is. I filmed more than that this week to do the YouTube recaps. And you'll see me complaining about how, oh, it's so difficult. I can't get anything else done. It's so hard for me. It is hard for me. I would, I would like everybody to say how difficult it is for me. But this guy is just going on and on. So then we get into the thing where she starts talking about, she's very clear. Very first thing she says is, I'm going to downsize here and move my clothing business to the B&B. &B. There was no waffling. There was no confusion. I want that to be clear because later on Cody says how Mary doesn't know what she wants and she's so confused. So she, right off the bat, she, well, she says... She is a woman. She says... That's you mocking Cody. Yes, to that's clear. me mocking Cody. Of course. Um, so... She says, I'm going to downsize here into a smaller place here. I'm going to move the clothing business to, to the B&B, &B and I'm going to be spending more time there to run my businesses. And then he's like, oh, that's cool. That's cool, right? And it's like, okay, 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 uh, real classic um, actor here. I'm going to make fun of here. Okay, Meryl Streep, great job acting there. I couldn't think of a single man. Dustin Hoffman, I don't know. That guy. Okay, we'll just go with Meryl Streep because she's the GOAT. So he's like, oh, oh, and then she's like, okay, it's, and then Robin's like, please say the right thing. Please say the things I begged you to say and I coached you to say. Cause With she's completely dry eyes for the first sentence and the second sentence, she managed to make them a little watery. So No tears, no tears. So Robin and Cody look at each other more than either one of them look at Mary. This is clearly, she has... Told him what to say, how to say it, all that kind of stuff. So then Mary goes, the great, this is actually the best revelation of the whole episode, is she goes, it's kind of hard to focus with that big old ring. And he's like, oh, 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 this ring. Oh, this ring? This ring. And then Robin's like, it's just a cool ring. It's just a cool ring, right? It's like, yeah, it's just a cool ring. And she's like, okay, why are you being, why are you guys being so awkward and weird? Like, they got caught in the closet with their pants down. Like... It I was mean, very stupidly awkward and unnecessary. Well, it's a big deal. He has replaced his wedding ring with a new ring that clearly is either bought with Robin, from Robin, for whatever. They know about it. And then they're trying to act like it's weird that Mary notices it, but they're acting like it's as weird as if Mary notices. From what I understand, he's actually been wearing this ring for months and months and months and months. Um, Since and he just, got rid of the last wife. Yeah, I mean, like, forever, and just no one has caught him until now. And Mary absolutely calls him out on it, and is like, why are you guys being so weird about it? Because um, it's like, hello, goodbye, yeah. get a clue. And it's like, I get that maybe Mary, but it's like, does Janelle realize that she, he has replaced her wedding ring? It's a little late, because they're clearly broken up. But it's a big, it's a big deal, and he's trying to act like, Mary's being weird that it's such a big deal. Apparently he's been wearing it for months. It's this ugly horse ring that I guess is supposed to be, someone found it already. It's supposed to be a pinky ring. And it's like, so, it's so funny to me that this dude... It represents that he's a horse's ass. <laughs> I gotcha. I don't know why that's so funny. Um, a lot of people have been making, there's some, we haven't seen Barbie because we don't go. We don't see movies. I can't think of the, I think the last movie I saw in a movie theater was Frozen. <laughs> Which was 10 years ago? Oh, I don't even know. I don't know. I saw it in Vegas with some friends. Um, but apparently there's some reference in Barbie that people think is hilarious. But this was this is obviously a film before Barbie. But it's, it's, so, it's so funny to me that this dude who's like so into patriarchy is like really into like, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing for me... <clears throat> I don't think there's anything unmanly about being into jewelry or art or any of those things. But I also don't bark about how I'm a traditional man with all this patriarchy. You don't? No. I, shockingly enough, I don't bark about that kind of stuff. <laughs> but it's just so funny, this guy who's just constantly going about traditional patriarchy and how everyone, he should be in charge and all this, doesn't adhere to any of the traditional patriarchy. He's wearing a pinky ring as, on his other finger, which is like, small hands, I have my tender hands. <laughs> And all this jewelry, and it's all, all seems to be from these places that are like, where you're, it's like the equivalent of like, I only buy 
uh, designer stuff. Like, it's very much like paying for the label kind of stuff. Whereas we're, we're more like, I'll pay for the label if it's a really good product and it's the best product there, there is. Or I'll just get it from an independent artist where you're paying, you're not paying for a big ad campaign. You're paying for them to like send their kids to band camp and for supplies. I don't know. That's, that's more the way I go. Because I'm a better person than him. No, um, so there's, there's all this awkwardness. And then we cut over to the other scene, which is Garrison has bought a house. Go Garrison. And Gabe and Gwen are considering moving in. And I am I love seeing them. I am really interested. But I was a little bit like, a little less of the moving in together and a little bit more of the other stuff. A little tiny bit. So they're talking about how... Who's there? Uh, so, so it's Gabe, Garrison, and Gwen. And then Christine and Janelle are there. Yes. And for those who don't remember, Gwen is Christine's daughter and Gabe and Garrison are Janelle's sons. Garrison has bought a house and Gabe and Gwen are thinking of moving in. And Christine and Janelle are like, I don't think this is going to work. Yes, they're siblings, but siblings fight and they're they're pretty different. I don't think this is going to work. Gar Garrison's talking about sending them a lease so that they're still legally bound to pay him even if they move out. And then we get a little tiny bit into the family dynamics. And Gabe says that it's a little bit like the boat sank and we all got into different life rafts, which is a very eloquent way of saying it. And he said each mom seems to be doing a good job. And I assume what he really means is Janelle and Christine, because I don't think I don't know if he's talking about Robin and, and Mary. I don't know if he's even thinking of them. Um, but he said, you know. Each mom is doing a good job of holding their units together, and it seems like we're doing an okay job as two separate units. They talk about, um, well, at that point, it's all that they cover. So then we get back to Cody, and um, he's like, okay, so you're just moving to the B&B because you're having trouble finding help here. And I'm like, if only she had family there to help her. Like, she helped with all the other stuff. Oh, no, wait. Or if Robin ever called her or checked right? on her once in a while. And so she's just a little bit like, I'm just traveling too much since mom left. And then Cody goes into this long, dumb story about, oh, are you going to move all your stuff on racks? And she's like, no, I'm going to take them off the racks to move them. And he's like, oh, well, I remember when you moved stuff with racks. And she's like, um, no, I didn't. And this is like the dumbest. Keep in mind. It was so dumb. It's like 20 minutes worth of this bull. And it goes on and on, and she's like, no. It's like, well, I remember one time in Vegas we did something, and it was on a rack, and some lady's like, fine, I'll just buy it. And I sold her the stuff. And then Robin's like, in, see? In a talking head. He's like, he's like, see, this is why, this is why I believe there's a future. You don't remember that stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh, lady. First of all, it was the dumbest, I mean, it's like, this episode, he really proves that he is the, the mind of an 11-year-old, which is insulting to many 11-year-olds. Most 11-year-olds are not this cruel uh, to cruel to, to people, but, you know, and then it's like that's what he thinks. He, does he, he, it's like him and Christine in the snowblower, which is like he just has to make sure with every wife that he just gets a little, like, by the way, I'm smarter than you, and he's too dumb to realize he is not smarter than them. Like... She's like, she's going to move and she's going to put like four racks in the back of a thing and they're just rolling around. Like, it was just so dumb. And then Robin's going, you just don't remember these things if you don't still care. And it's like, that's not true at all. I remember plenty of dumb things from my life from people I absolutely do not care about, never want to see again. In fact, in fact, I would say that I remember more because I'm still so angry with how stupid they are. <laughs> right? Um, <sighs> okay, so we go back to Christine and Janelle, and we get into Christine saying, oh, the other half of my condo is up for rent, you know, you should move, and she's like, they seem so unhappy. We know she doesn't move, which is, like, why it's so frustrating, they're so far behind, but as near as I can tell, it's going to stay that way. Mary said, I guess, in one of her things, that they only go as far as the next Christmas. And I'm guessing they're going to keep doing this every single year until eventually they don't want to pay them anymore and then they'll probably use up the rest of the footage in one year and be done. Um, and for people who keep saying there can't possibly be another season, it's their number one rated show. There will be another season. I mean, you would have to find out that Cody was eating babies 
in order for them to cancel this show. And in which case they wouldn't cancel the show, they would just keep they would just get rid of Cody. Like they're not getting rid of the show until the ratings go down. It is a long the ratings have a long way to drop before they get rid of it. Um unless they get a whole bunch of new hit shows, which they would sure love to, but Seeking Brother Husband was not it. I liked Match Me Abroad, and you can go watch our recaps of them below. Click below, it says, in our description, it says, a link to all of our playlists. You can see all of our playlists. You can see every playlist we've already we've done for the last, like, eight years. There's quite a few shows in there. Um, feel free to just You can have us them. on in the background. Yeah, just, like, you're thinking, like, Instead of having, like, a fan on to go to sleep, just put on one of our playlists. We'll drone on and on. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so then they talk... that go on and on. No, Back no, no. to the show. Back to the show. So they talk about... Uh, so Janelle says, you know, maybe one day I'll want to get a house near Maddie and the babies, you know. Um, and so they're like, yeah, we could do that. And they talk about kind of maybe going different places. And Garrison's like, well, if you want to continue to do Christmas... You can host Christmas here in the future. And then he's like, I kind of want to do Thanksgiving wherever Christine is. Um, Which is very sweet. And then they and then Janelle kind of says, and I don't, the thing about that is, I don't think they have to spend every holiday together to prove that they're still a family. Like, there's kind of this weird thing where it's like, oh, because Cody didn't spend time with one child like if anyone doesn't spend it together it means they're just as broken like no there's you don't spend every holiday with every family but there's a big difference between you're not welcome in my home and oh you're gonna stay you're gonna go with your girlfriend or it didn't i don't want to go all the way to utah totally different things so it seems like they're in pretty good space christine's like you know we're gonna figure out holidays but it seems like we're gonna we're gonna have to be more separated moving on because there's so many different families and Janelle said, you know, I think this Christmas has permanently altered my relationship and I don't ever picture um, doing a holiday with Cody again. And this is why when people are saying... Um, so we'll see if they get back together. Yeah, so when people are saying things like, oh, I don't like that Christine's, uh, Janelle's going on this date because it means that she's giving another chance. I'm like, I think she's been really explicit that she is, she's done with him in that sense and she's leaving it open that if he wants to totally change who he is she would be open to meeting him where he's at but that he's not going to like that's just not going to happen and i think that's a very realistic i mean i would want more of a definitive end answer but she seems more comfortable with that like this is how i feel but there's no indication that she's running back to him unless he does a complete overhaul of his entire personality which is you know not going to happen now, she does talk about she is worried about her kids' mental health and that Gabe and Garrison are really hurting. Gwen says she is also hurting a bit. Um, Christine kind of says, you know, my kids have been lacking a father for a very long time. Because he abandoned them. Basically, he hasn't been around them for a long time. So she says, in some ways, my kids are hurting less than Janelle's kids are because he used to be around them more. Um, and... You know, that does seem to be a reflection of kind of what has happened. Um, and so that's really, that's really, that's really sad. So then we go back to the conversation, because I, I hate to tell you this, the conversation between Mary and Cody is not over yet. You would think it was over. You would think you that would she You would hope it was over. So then we cut back, and Robin is a meddling, and she's like, um, Mary, you need to tell him about the your concern you have. And she's like... I'll tell him, but I don't think he cares. And she's like, I am not leaving you or the family. And then I, I wrote a note, why are you so weird? And then Cody's going, um, and then he, Cody. This is where Cody says, well, I'll just put you in the closet. Sorry. No, I mean garage. Barn Dominium. No, this is, so Cody starts getting really weird. And instead of Cody Weirder. saying. Weirder. So in the interviews, he says things like, this has no effect on me. I don't care. It doesn't matter. But then to her, he's like, oh, okay. Okay. And then I just wrote, Robin, so effing awkward. I don't know. I don't know. I guess, that's, I guess that, that sums up Robin this whole episode. Sorry, my arm kind of itches. So then he starts going, well, I have some questions about the B&B. &B. And I think what he was saying is, why are you, is it not going to be a B&B &B anymore? Are you just going to live there? Or in other words, are you still going to make a lot of money because I want you to pay off Coyote Pass? Yeah, and then... But, but never actually and then saying. She's like, 
Oh, I know what it was that made me think that she was so awkward. So she's like, well, no, it's going to continue to run. Like it was when she said, I'm going to move to the B&B because mom has passed. It's hard to run both these businesses. I'm going to downsize here, move to the B&B and move my clothes there. To me, it was 100% clear what was going to happen. She's, she's already has said she's going to move the, the, B and, the, the clothing into the carriage house. She's going to live into the room that her mother used to occupy, which was where who was running it. And then she'll get a smaller place. Cody's brain, which is full of noodles and, and empty promises, doesn't seem to understand that she can live in the room her mom used to. So he's all confused. He does. He just and wants then, to rub it in. Then Robin is like, Cody, I'm going to say something. You need to listen. It's a sentimental house. And Mary's like, okay, well, no, I mean, it's not just a sentimental house. Like, it was a little bit like, okay, Robin, you are also not getting it. It is the sentimental house, but it's also a business. I'm going to move into one room. And then he's like, well, I don't understand why you're not, why you're running this business this way. And Mary's a little bit like, well, he hasn't cared where I've slept for the last 10 years. So I don't know why he suddenly cares so much. And it's like, Thank you, Mary. I know. We're getting to the money part because he definitely tips his hand with that money stuff. At first, I thought he was suggesting he'd sell it. And he's like, well, you know, it was good for her and Bonnie. I don't know if she makes any money on this thing. But it's none of his business because they didn't give him any money. Now, I don't think they should have given her any money. But the fact that they didn't give her any money means that she does not have any any input. Now, the fact that they thought that they would have some input on it makes me wonder if they're getting a share for other businesses. But they don't talk about money because it makes Cody look bad because he is, him and Robin are sucking up all that money. Um, so I said, Among other things. So she's like, he's an idiot. I bought this house. It's still a business. And, I'm, and he, my note on him is he can't grasp anything about anything because <laughs> he's so stupid. He doesn't care where I slept. And she's like, I don't want to live in Utah, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because she is saying she's going to move to Utah half the time. So she should just, so that part wasn't super clear. She, what she's Utah. saying is that she wants to live with Cody half the time. Yes. I want to live on the moon. Like, like, and then he goes, this is what he says, is he goes, well, it seems like Robin really wants us to reconciliation. or What, what did he say? Recon he pronounces it all weird. He pronounces it reconciliation. No. Relation, something like that. Like it was reconciliation or something. Something like that. And he goes, and this co this conversation makes me really uncomfortable. Okay, then how about you ball up and say what you want to say? Well, because Robin left him at home. Because Robin, Robin's got, got him tucked away in a, I'm sure he pawned him for a couple extra ugly paintings. <laughs> so then we cut Chigley over. Prince. We cut, we cut, we cut their G. Clay prints. We told this story before, which is when we when we were engaged, we used to go to Santa Barbara a lot, and there was this. We'd go to the art fair uh, by the pier, and there was this guy who was selling a jiggly prints. Uh, Very slimy artist. French guy, I think, and he was always like, "Oh, you should have bought my uh, jiggly prints," and we were like, "Jiggly prints? That doesn't seem." That can't be right, right? It's like 15 years ago, and whenever we went, I was actually gonna get some get one because I really liked them and we always saw them when we were like you know courting and all that so we were gonna buy one but every time we went he was always talking to some young college student because it was about UCSB oh we should uh we should go to the cafe and discuss art and we're always like oh okay never mind but so we always thought they were jig jiggly prints and it was only no we never thought that. well we called them jiggly prints because because uh, jiggly was prince. hilarious because the way he said it jiggly prints but i didn't know what it was supposed to be until later on that i saw it written out and i was like oh it's jiggly prints but to this day we still call them jiggly prints and that's that is for reference that is alleged to be what robin and cody have all over their houses and jiggly prints are still prints but they're used with paint and so they usually cost quite a bit more than I'm willing to pay for a print. Like I have no problem with prints. I'm just not going to, I'm not going to pay $10,000 for a print. I'll pay, well, I, I can't afford $10,000 for a painting. But if we could, we would. <laughs> but we're not, but we're Both not, cans but if we're to buy a print, it's going to be like a hundred bucks that we frame just to have in like the office or something. I'm not paying, I'm not paying for a print. I don't, I don't think it sounds like a great investment either for a print, but for jiggly prints, okay. So now we kind of we kind of come up to. I thought this was going to be the whole episode. I thought the whole episode was going to be this date. So I was kind of like tick tick tick. What's going on? Where's the date? So with seven minutes left. No, we're not quite there yet. Oh. 
we still we still have all of Cody and Mary on this page, and then we have this much of the date because I was like, spoiler alert, I spoiled it. It wasn't much to it, but we get it. So this was I was waiting for more information about this because in the preview it shows Christine saying Maddie called me and told me that Janelle was going on a date with with Cody. And the, uh, the implication was that Maddie wasn't happy about it because she said, you know, it doesn't seem we like think. she's... It wasn't really clear, but because of Christine's response, where her response was, I'm here to support Janelle whether she stays with him, reconciles, or leaves him, which is wildly appropriate for someone whose business it is not. Yes. This is not... Yes. But the implication implies that C Maddie was upset. Okay. Don't you think? Probably. That's kind of the implication, because it seems like otherwise she would say, if Maddie called her and said, you know, anyway, anyway, that's just my, if I was writing dialogue, that would be what I would naturally apply. I was hoping we'd hear more about Maddie, but that was the whole thing we saw it in the preview. I'm dying to know what some of the other kids think. I respect their privacy if they don't want to talk about it, but I'm dying to hear all the same. Um, so my point, though, is that Christine should not be pushing her agenda on Janelle. She's, at this point, she is not... Now, her kids can. Janelle's kids can. It's appropriate for them to be like, Mom, you can't get back with Dad. This is terrible. But Christine, who is now just a friend, um, needs to, a former, a, a, a fellow ex-wife, needs to be respecting Janelle's um, um, an agency. Like, she needs to be free. And so I think Christine's handling it really well by saying, this is not... This is not my business. I'm here to support Janelle, whatever she decides. Totally appropriate, Janelle. Uh, Christine, high five. Um, and then, but she kind of expresses that she doesn't think he's made up with Savannah. The kids seem to mostly have a problem. Um, and then it sounds like most of Janelle's kids are frustrated with Cody. Okay. And then Janelle kind of says her point of view, which is like, yeah, we have all these problems in our marriage. But if we don't talk about our marriage, we can just go and have a casual fun time. My view of this is, one, she's double checking. Like, yep, this is still not it. Two, I think this is my this is not the words that she said, but it's my impression is that she is starting to say th things like, what is our post marriage relationship going to look like? Because we still have kids. We still need to be friendly. I don't want to have what Christine and Cody have. And so she's like, okay, we can just go out. We can just have casual friends, but we are not in a marriage anymore. Um, I think, well, it's very clear that Cody thought that he could do the absolute minimal for her birthday. He could do one small gesture and everything would go back to normal. And they could, they could, he that's could what get he's her. always done. Yeah, he'd get her back underneath her thumb, his thumb, and he could stay a polygamist and Robin could be happy. Underneath with him. his horse ring. So then we get back to Cody and Mary. And this is why I started off this discussion by saying Mary was super clear what she wanted. She's going to move to the B&B. &B. She's going to run her business there. She's going to get a smaller place in Flagstaff. She's going to downsize. She's going to move into Cody's garage. So then Cody goes, quote, Mary doesn't know what she wants. I've known her for 33 years and she never knows what she wants. And so I'm going to provide some options. And then he starts throwing out the dumbest options ever. And so he's like, well, what if we build on Coyote Pass? And she's a little bit like, well, you told, you already told Janelle there's no money to do that. He's like, no, 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 we can pay it off real quick. And then I have this great idea. No, 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 no. Pretty sure what he meant was in his head, you can pay it off real quick. And well, that would be super convenient for me. I think what he, that's, th that is exactly what I think this whole section is, is that he is like, well, well, well. Because he's like, I want to build a barn dominium. And it's not really what he's talking about. Barn dominiums are usually converted barns into, into living spaces. What he is, what's funny is what he's describing is almost exactly what Janelle pitched him, but bigger. And so what he is saying is he wants to, he, he's like, I have too many cars and too much stuff. And so I thought about building this barn dominium and I'm going to put a loft on top and you could live up there. We could put a shower and a kitchen in and then you could live up there. And she actually, I made a joke when we were watching it live, which you can see on our Patreon. Um, and then she actually said it, which is, I said, he's going to put all the stuff he doesn't want. And she's like, yeah, they're going to put all the stuff, all the stuff he doesn't want, his car doesn't want, and me. And I was like, go marry. That's a joke worthy of me. Like, let's hear it. So, um, and, and then, and then 
so she's like, and I think it's very clearly, he wants her to help pay this off to build this thing and then maybe to rent it back from him. I don't, I don't know, but somehow he was thinking about her money. And then Robin goes, see, she's still part of his big picture. He literally said, I have a bunch of extra stuff I don't want. Do you want to go live with it? And we'll real quickly pay off. Now, a lot of people have said, well, isn't Coyote Pass paid off now? Yes. In real life, 2023, as far as I know, it is now paid off. Okay. But, but in the year of our Lord, 2020, okay. whatever this is. Two. In way back in yesteryear, when this was when this was first filmed, they had not paid it off. Okay. So to me, what it sounded like was. Well, Mary has this really clear idea of what she wants to do, but I don't think that it's good enough. And so I have this idea that gets me what I want. Now, I, my opinion has always been that this property, he does not want to move to it. He wants to develop it. He wants to be a real estate mogul. He wants to have his kids go play on it. He wants to maybe build some houses and rent it out. He maybe wants to have some sort of office there. And I think maybe in this view of Mary living there and her saying that she's not going to be there all the time, He's thinking of a great twofer, which is he can go down, he can hide out from the one family he has left, he can play with his cars, and then he can use Mary's loft when she's not there. That's really what I think it is. He can shower there, he can use the bathroom there, he can basically kind of half live down there. Because while I do not for a second doubt that he was not with Janelle and Mary and Christine for years and years and years, I also think he's a big, huge, neglectful father in Robin's house too. He has the big energy of the guy who's like, oh, family time? It's time for me to go make a work call. Oh, it's dishes? I've got to go poop. Like, he has that big, <laughs> he has the big energy of the guy who does the absolute minimum um, any, any time. So sh she's like, this is insulting. And he's sort of like, I don't get why Mary doesn't understand my brilliance. And she's like, this is, this is a bunch of BS. This is insulting. Um, and then he's like, well, there are only so many ways you can tell somebody I don't want you around. And then Cody goes in this whole thing about how, see, he will not tell her with actual words that he is done. He'll just tell everyone else. He'll tell all the, the interview head, people, yes. the, the producers. By this point, I, uh, she has seen all of season 16. She has not seen 17. Um, I'm just saying that because people are always like, well, he said in the last tell-all he was done with her. Well, she hasn't seen the last tell-all. So I think that's part of the reason why Interview Mary and Episode Mary are still in little different places. And Interview Mary is a lot smarter and cagier as to what's going on than Episode Mary is that they're delayed by quite a bit to actually what they have seen. Now, I would have left when the dude told me that the thought of me kissing him made him sick, which was episode seasons ago. Isn't that sad? I think that's just unbelievably Nobody sad. Would tell you that. Well, I, it doesn't matter if anybody told me that. It would only matter if you told me that. But if I had some, if I was with someone else, I, I especially on TV, I don't know if I could live that down. Um, but in the in interview, Cody is like, well, it's really inevitable. This all happened. It's like, none of this is inevitable. This was you. You cannot continue to act like, well, we've tried and nothing has worked because he has tried nothing. Um, and and it's worked and it's yeah. well and this is what this is why i believe janelle when janelle says i mean not that there's any doubt that i need to believe janelle but when she says he just kind of neglects the wives and hopes they go away i don't know why this is what's weird though is then why is he still so mad about christine because he didn't get to neglect her first well he did neglect her for years and years like he wanted to oh so he didn't get enough neglecting in to feel as though it had Okay, I can believe that. What's weird to me is if he's... It's still weird to me that he is so mad at Christine, but he's but he hasn't... It hasn't even occurred to him that he's lost Janelle. Like, this is a man incapable. Goldfish well, have been trying to jump through a hoop faster than Cody can realize he's losing his wives. Well, I mean, he gets to neglect her for six months and talk to her, I guess, at the four-month mark and then the six-month mark, and, you know, that's what he wants. That's all he wants. So it's fine with him. So then he goes on and on about how if Mary wants to live in this denial. And it's like, it's not really, I mean, it, I think to anybody objectively, it's clear what's happening. But, uh, you know, he won't say it to her face. And he clearly says he won't say it because... Um, 
Because, because Robin might not. Because Robin might lose respect if he is too out clear. For him later. Then Robin goes into this whole thing that I think is just a lie. I don't know if I believe it. I would if I am on the tell all. I, I'm asking. I Mary will this. not believe it until it's proven truthful. Because it's just so because far and away from her. What she has said. Lovely personality. Well, she has not said this. For for years now, we have seen her tell Mary to keep hope. Well, now what she says is, I would want Mick to tell Mary to go and be unhappy, but she and begged go and me. And be happy. But then not unhappy. I told to go and be happy someplace else. Yes. Now, last week in the episode, Mar uh, Robin said that she wouldn't tell Mary this, but this episode she's saying she tried to tell Mary to go and be happy, and Mary was like, no, you can't ever stop giving me hope because I'm too tired to fight, so you have to keep... Now, if you told me this happened during the catfish years, maybe this is true. But I just have a hard time believing that this is an ongoing There's a lot conversation. Of <laughs> and no tears. Robin, she said... What she says is that Mary told her, Robin, always give me hope. Never give up fighting for me. And I'm... It's a hard time... It's a, I have a hard time believing that that is current. Now, maybe this happened eight years ago, um, but I demand that we find out in the tell-all, they ask Mary, do you remember this conversation where you begged, where, where Robin told you that you should maybe move on and you begged her to keep holding on hope? When was that? Can you tell us about the discussion? Because Robin has never given any indication that has ever occurred until just now. And it does seem that suddenly Cody and, and Robin are on this, like, let me rewrite the past about, like, um, Cody, Cody, um, Cody and Mary almost reconciled until Christine, who he hates, told him not to. Okay, so finally, and this is literally six and a half minutes to where for the end of the episode, including the next week preview. All of a sudden he says, well, it's been six months since our fight and we're getting together. And I, all my thought is, is if I went to a marriage counselor and I said, my husband and I had this tear out, dragged out fight and he left. Um, and I haven't seen, I've seen him once since, in which case I told him I wanted to separate and we haven't really spoken or seen each other since the therapist would say, wow, how are you handling that divorce? Like no one would say like, oh, so are you guys still working on it? Like you would be, it's six months. It's over, dude. It's over. It's, it's done. It's complete. It's finished. And his attitude definitely seems to be, this is all I need for us to, for us to go back to normal. And she's very clearly like, you know, you know, so first of all, he's got this dinner reservation at Mariposa, which plenty of people, since this came out, he's like, it's the most exclusive place. He made such a big deal. And I'll tell you what, if he can get a reservation there, I don't want to go. Well, and he goes on and on how Janelle can't get a reservation, but I got a reservation. And a ton of people checked, and you can get reservations right now. They said, people who, I asked people, you know, who live in the area, and they said, yeah, it's a nice restaurant. There's no doubt about that. And, like, maybe you can't get... A little less so now that he can go. You know, maybe he can get reserv... You can't get reservations at the exact time you want on, like, a Friday night during peak season but you can get a lunch reservation you can get an hour earlier you can get an hour later you can get stuff it's closed this time last time i wrote all over his arm gesturing so he's real sensitive about that um and so he made a big deal and of course i had this whole thing this image of them being like the idea that like that only cody could get it you could call and say hey it's janelle brown from sister wives who wants to f film and they'd be like no no janelle she is not important enough and they'd say, well, Cody's making it for her. Oh, Cody Brown. Oh, quick, quick, call the maitre d'. We have an emergency. A celebrity is coming. And then what's funny is Janelle says, oh, I, I, you know, that's so sweet of you. We've been trying to go for years and we always have to cancel. And then he says, yeah, I don't, that's why I dressed up because I don't like to go there in jeans. I like to go in slacks. And it's like, oh, so clearly Cody has gone. And Janelle has not. <laughs> and he has bailed on her every time. And it's like, okay, not a great start to this, this view of the, you know, all that. And then Cody says, it's really complicated, and I don't really understand what the problem is between us. And I'm like... But I hope I can get a kiss at the end. Um, and he's like, I, I, I think we can reconcile. I don't see what the issue is. 
And it's like, I can roll hundreds of hours of footage to explain to you what the issue is. And the, the issue is... You're not going to get through to that thick skull. And she said it repeatedly, explicitly, repeatedly to his face in many episodes. He is not a good father to her children. He has asked her repeatedly to pick sides. He expects her to just come and hang out with him and Robin and Robin's family and cut exclude the rest of her family. He's neglecting Savannah, who has done nothing. As far as I know, there's no conflict with Savannah, but he just can't be bothered to go visit her. I mean, there's no indication that after she said, you haven't seen Savannah, there's no indication that he started coming over and seeing her. Maybe that happened, maybe it didn't. But for him to act like, I have no idea what happened, and then he's like, I need her to treat me like a person and not an object. And I'm like, what are you even talking about? This sounds like something, this sounds like something someone DeLulu made up for him, which would be Robin, and him discussing it night after night, and he's like, yeah, she just treats me like a hunk of meat or something weird like that. I don't even understand. So they get in the car, she seems very kind and genuine, and she's just like, it's just, we're just kind of hanging out, it's just like a date, it's not a big deal, nothing deep. And she gives the smallest pushback ever. All she says is, they kind of are talking about, you know, he says, I got you a mirror post. And she's like, oh, thank you. That's so nice. You know, I really appreciate that. And they kind of have some chitter chatter. And then she makes one comment, which is, you know, um, what is the exact wording? Something like, if there's anything left, then we have a lot to figure it out. And then it cuts to him in an interview being like, yeah, she just really just kept denying me left and right and it was just so difficult. I was like, dude, she barely, all she did is acknowledge you guys have problems and he just completely deflates on camera. And then they say, well, maybe we turn off the camera for a bit, which bummed me out because I wanted to see it. But the other part of me goes, literally, I don't think they've seen each other except on camera. That fight that they had was on camera. The only time they've seen each other since was Salsa Bravo or Bravo. I have to go look up if it's Bravo. I think it's Salsa Bravo. We don't care. I don't really care. Yeah, I'm not. They're already getting enough free advertising this season without me throwing my two cents in. So they go. Um, so I get it on the other hand that maybe they want to have a few minutes of talking that's not on camera. Of course, there's a solution to that, which is they could reach out to each other or Cody could reach out to each other. But to me, it felt like very much like an ending because even with the best of intention, he wants to put zero work in. And he explicitly says, I loved Janelle before, past tense, and I think I could love her again. And it's like, oh, so you even love her now. If she does everything he wants and ignores how terrible he's been. And then she says that, um, she says at one point out of habit, she slipped her hand into his and it just felt weird and so she took it back. And it just sounds like she is just not in love with this dude anymore. Um, and then that was it. I was like, I cannot believe how little, I can't believe they showed the whole date in previews. Like, I was kind of like, wow. Um, and it was absolutely nothing, so all the people who freaked out about how she was going to get back together with him, I don't think need either happen. And then we get the, the sneak peek. So we see more of Gwen, Gabe, and Garrison talking. They discuss more about the text messages, more about their feelings. Um, you know, Robin saying they don't expect, it was, her, apparently she says, you don't respect me as a mother. And I thought, yeah, you, because you haven't been a mother. She's, you've not resided in the same household as them. Uh, we almost never saw you interacting with them as a mother. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is like some real evil stepmother stuff. You know what I mean? Are you shocked? They haven't, they haven't lived, like Garrison hasn't, you know, it's just, it's just ridiculous. And then I guess we get some special footage of how great it is that McKelty still gets along with Cody, which is not going to do McKelty any favors. Let me tell you. And I'm just completely not interested in seeing Cody. It, I don't think he realizes, um, because I think he's incapable of understanding the human world, is that doing nothing to reconcile any of your other relationships and then sucking up to one child who's playing both sides of the fence does not make you look like a better father. Like the same way that him taking Aurora out to get her earrings or Aurora and Brianna to go out and do does not, doesn't make me go, oh, well, he's clearly a good father to Janelle's kids because of this. No, it doesn't negate the issues he's having with virtually every other child he has. Like, that's great that him and McKelty get along. 
I try to hold my tongue as best I can, but I'm not very good at it with McKelty. But it doesn't doesn't somehow negate the fact that he doesn't have a relationship with any of the other of his kids. Um, and then there's a very odd scene at the end of that where we see Janelle and Christine and a bunch of, it looks like Christine's friends. And then Christine goes, I, you know, Janelle really needs friends because I'm not going to be here forever. And I'm like, is she dying? I know she's not dying. Does she mean like coming back to Flagstaff? Like what does not be here forever mean? Because that, that has to be taken out of context. And then what was even weirder was... I was like, well, I'll look up the, the episode description on the TLC schedule. And there's no, you're, usually the next two episodes are up and you can see them. So our conspiracy theory is something's up. That there's something they don't want to put in the description until they have the sneak peeks out. I don't know. They haven't had up the next, next two episodes for obviously a while. I thought maybe I just missed it because I don't check every single day, but normally I check quite often. Because I'm trying to figure out, last season was like 14, 15 episodes, I think. And so I'm a little bit like, is the season coming to an end soon? Do we only have four or five more episodes left? Or is this an extra long season? Um, normally it runs up until January. And that's like, we have uh, all of November, December. Uh, that would be a really long season. And I'm wondering if there's something in the episode that they want to like hold off I don't know. Or maybe they're just going to do a rerun. Okay. So I did the best I could with this episode, but we're really short, running short. And last week's episode did not perform so great. So I think people are kind of, I think some people are just kind of losing interest because the episode is going, the season is going so slow and there's so much Robin and it seems like there's so much, at least, I don't want to say anything positive, but Robin just standing around and talking about the other women is like the least compelling, the least compelling. And what's, what makes me mad is I don't want to see Robin in Cody's day-to-day -day life, but I would like to see them have some of these. If they had gone back and they had filmed Robin talking to Cody about Mary, I would have loved to see that because I know that they are at different points at this. And he, she wants him to take Mary back and he does not. But he doesn't want to show Robin how little he wants because it'll make her unhappy. That would have been compelling TV. This is not. So, I don't know. Uh, anyway. We'll see you later. Join us for 90 Day Fiancé tomorrow. Bye!